Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, Limitless Lauren. So today I'm going to be talking about traveling with a toddler. And I did another video with traveling alone, but it was when Liam was a baby before he could walk. And so I am now doing a video of when he's now a toddler because I feel like that is much different and required different tips than what I said in my previous video. And in my experience, I think traveling with a baby is much easier than traveling with a toddler. With a baby, they don't wanna get around because they can't walk yet. They're much more easier to please, much easier to fall asleep. Now, Liam's at the age where he wants down, he's more independent, he wants to do his own thing, he doesn't wanna be stuck sitting somewhere for too long. Thankfully, I had help this time. The video that I did with traveling with a baby, I did it alone. And traveling alone with a child is just difficult. Doesn't matter what the age, it's just difficult doing it on your own. So thankfully Taylor was with me, so I had some help and it just made it a little easier, but it was still a struggle. So the first, I guess, section I'm gonna be talking about is how to pack. And I suggest taking one carry-on bag and we took his diaper bag, which is a backpack. I would highly suggest some kind of backpack so where your arms are free. And I also took my purse too, but it's a crossbody bag so I could also have my hands free. And we had the car seat for the flight there, but not on the way back. I'll get into more details with that later. But the, that's all that we had on us because the less you have to carry through the airport, the better because it's already stressful enough as it is. So in the backpack that I took, I filled it all with stuff for Liam to make sure that he would be okay on the flight. So I packed books and specifically I went to our local library and rented a bunch of books. For the board books, they have like certain sections around the library and the kids area with just strictly board books. And for my library, you can rent out 50 kids books at a time, which is nuts to me. In my opinion, books are the best thing to take to the airport and on the flight because each book I can make last for a good amount of time because I just go over each little detail, all the colors, what's happening in the picture, the shapes. And when you get books from the library, they're new and interesting. Your child has never seen it before, so they're more inclined to sit and read it with you. Next thing I packed was I went to Dollar Tree and got toys. They have so many different toys little tchotchke items and they're just a dollar a piece so if they get broken lost it's a dollar it's not gonna break the bank so i got him a slinky i got him coloring books i got him little trucks four wheelers a couple of different items here and there i also got snacks from the dollar tree they had a box of fruit snacks and it came with like six packs or something for a dollar so I got him those, they have tons of different snacks. So I packed up the toys and the snacks in there. I also already had snacks at home. So I got individual baggies, filled all those snacks up and shoved those in there. And then I also brought his water cup. He has the little 360 Munchkin brand water cup. And I didn't know this or else I would have done it on the flight there, but you can fill up the baby's water cup with water. It has to be a clear liquid. And you can actually take that through security because you know if you bring your own water you can't take it you have to dump it out so that's what i did before the flight because i didn't know but somebody on the way back told me somebody who has kids said that you can take their sippy cup with water through security and they test it which they did i saw they put it in this little machine so we were able to take his water cup full on the way back i also packed his little security toy his lovey is what we call it it's like a little lamb blanket and he sleeps with it every night, it's his favorite toy. So I would bring something that your child really loves, it makes them feel good, comfortable, safe. Because being at an airport, on an airplane, it's all just kind of crazy going on. So just having that little toy with them can help them maybe settle down and relax a little bit. And then the last thing I packed in there was diapers and wipes. I packed the majority of his diapers in our checked bag but I did pack at least three regular diapers in the backpack and then a pack of wipes. Now with the wipes, some airports have had to check the wipes if they were open. So they have to scan it and swipe it with this thing to make sure there's no chemicals, explosives. So I made sure to bring a closed, unopened 
thing of wipes so they didn't have to check it going through security on the way to Vegas but on the way home I had wipes open but they didn't check it so I really feel like it just depends on the airport so my next section is getting through the airport so let's first talk about the stroller and the car seat because sometimes you need it sometimes you don't in the other video I did traveling alone with a baby I had an umbrella stroller and so I took that through the airport because I had no help I needed something to put him in. So I would suggest the stroller if you're going alone and I would suggest the smallest stroller, an umbrella stroller, easily collapsible, nothing too bulky, too much to handle. But this time we didn't use a stroller, I just carried him through the airport, which, ugh, my arms were killing me because he's so heavy. But it's just one less thing we have to worry about because we did have to take his car seat. Now with the stroller and the car seat, you have the option of checking it when you check your luggage or you can gate check it which you can take it through the airport take it through security take it to your gate and then when you go to board the plane you drop it off at the very end before you get on the plane there's like this little section they come and grab it and then when you right when you get off the plane it's right there for you to pick it up so for the stroller i feel like gate checking it is the best because you'll have the stroller right when you get off the plane, put them in it, and get going. Now for the car seat, we had to take our car seat because family didn't have a car seat for us. So he has a big convertible three-in-one car seat. It's big and bulky. So I bought a car seat cover from Amazon. It was like a little under nine dollars at the time I bought it. The price was always fluctuating so I waited until it was at its lowest point and bought it. And I'll link it below if you are interested, but it's it's cheap. It's cheap quality, mine already has holes in it, but I really had to shove it in there. And so I feel like holes were bound to happen, but I could get more uses out of it. It's just kind of like little holes here and there. I had done research about don't check your car seat because it gets so banged up and broken. Gate check it because it's less likely to get damaged and all that kind of stuff. So. Taylor, he had to carry everything. He had to carry the suitcases, the car seat, the backpack, all of it. Because he's Mr. Muscle Man and I carried the baby, which is already a task in itself. So we were kind of worried going through security taking the car seat because it is so big. We weren't sure if it was going to fit through the belt. But all Taylor had to do was carry it through the metal detector. And then that was that. But he had to wait a while because they had to check it and all this kind of stuff. So it's just a hassle. It's a hassle to take it through the airport. I would highly suggest just checking your car seat right when you get there, when you're checking your other bags. And if it gets damaged, it just gets damaged. You just hope for the best. <laughs> and, and hopefully you don't have to take a car seat. It just kind of was something we had to do. So once you get through security, get to your gate, Get settled down, have your child get out his energy, his or her energy. Run around, follow them through the airport, walk, go look, explore, just so they get tired, wound down, and ready to be able to sit for the flight. And then before you board, check baby's diaper. That is important because you don't want to have to be changing the baby's diaper on the flight. If you do, it happens but make sure that you go to the bathroom and baby is ready before you board the flight. So talking about boarding the flight, each airline does it differently, but families can board early. So if you check into your flight and you're in the B group and you're a low number, you're not gonna board forever, it doesn't matter because families, I think Southwest said up to six years old, you can board early. So all the A's go and then families can board. So it gives you enough time to get settled down, make sure you get a seat, all that kind of stuff. So that's really helpful and convenient. So let's say that you get a delay and you're having to stay at the airport longer than expected and baby's getting restless, you've already walked around exploring, make sure that you connect to the airport's Wi-Fi because you can pull up games, you can pull up YouTube, just so they can sit down and relax. That's what I did for Liam. He likes his little YouTube show. So I connected to the Wi-Fi and got that up. If your child has a little iPad or games, just connect to the Wi-Fi because once you board the plane, you're not gonna have access to all of that unless you pay money. So my next section is surviving 
the flight. So again, connect to the Wi-Fi of the airline, but once you get up in the air, you're not gonna have all of the availability like you would the regular Wi-Fi. But with Southwest, they do have live TV, and so you have a bunch of different channels to pick from. And I think they had Disney Channel, and they have different movies, FX. Liam wasn't into any of the shows on there, but if your child likes the Disney Channel or movies, they had Spider-Man, all kinds of different things. So that is another option. And then when you go to pick your seat, I highly suggest sitting next to the window seat because Liam is older now so he can be able to look and point things out and he loves the airplanes. I pointed out everything what was going on outside, the different airplanes, the workers, the suitcases, the sky, the clouds, everything in detail. And when we were up in the air, I was pointing out everything around us just to kill some time and to just teach him what it looks like being up in an airplane and what the outside of the airport looks like. So when we were up in the air and the seatbelt signs were off and you could take out your bags and everything like that, I would take out one toy at a time. You don't want to put it all out there because then it gets a little bit too much. So I would take out one book at a time and like I said, really go into detail about every single thing in the book. Once he was bored with that, I would take out his toy, we would play with his toy. And then when he got bored with that, we would look at the literature that's in the back cubby of the seat. They have magazines, they have the little pamphlets with the drink menu, the safety pamphlet. So I would go into detail about that. He would flip through the magazine, we would point at pictures just to kill as much time as possible. And our flight was a little under four hours on the way there. So at one point I did have to change his diaper. So I suggest sitting next to the bathroom or as close to the bathroom as possible. They have one in the front, one in the back. We sat in the very back row. It would be nice to sit up at the front, but unless you board early enough in front of the A group, you're most likely not gonna get the very front seat. It is gonna take longer to get off, but if you need an emergency for the bathroom, you're just right there. So I took him to the bathroom and they have the little trays that fold down for the baby changing tables, but it's really small. He did not fit on the tray, like his lower half was hanging off. So it was just very awkward, but we got it done and it was okay. So window seat and next to the bathroom are gonna be your best bets. And my last section is giving yourself a pat on the back. You deserve it, you did it. You got through the airport, you survived the flight. Now you can just take a deep breath and relax. Traveling with small children is not for the faint of heart. It takes so much patience and a lot of deep breathing. All you can do is take it step by step, but if all hell breaks loose, just order a shot of vodka, shot of whiskey, go with the flow, you'll get there eventually, so. Good luck with your flight, or if you've already done one, you can relate to everything that I'm saying, because it is a lot. But hopefully some of these tips will help you in your future flights with your toddler. I wish you the best of luck. I needed it. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in my next one. Bye. But wait. Before you go, I'll miss you so, so please subscribe to my channel and like this video.